Howdy, uh, we are the New York City Design Committee. Uh, my name is John David Eiler, and I'm joined by John Logan Leatherwood, I'm James Reber, Kyle Brand, and Tane Kim. So jumping right into it, New York City is nicknamed the Big Apple, which was founded in 1624 by the Dutch, who decided to settle along the Hudson River. The metropolitan area of New York is made up of Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island which combined make up a population of roughly 8.4 million people. New York City has been famously known for the Statue of Liberty, the 27-time World Series champion New York Yankees, Wall Street, and unfortunately, the events of 9-11. So in New York City, there's roughly 3.1 million occupied housing units. The majority of these are multifamily homes. 69% uh, of these occupied housing units are rented, and this is due to the younger crowd that taking up most of the population in New York City. Um, there's 2.6 people per household in New York City. Um, New York City has a high median income or high median home cost of $681,600, which was recorded in 2019. Uh, this is more than double the national average. The median household income is $57,782 dollars, which was recorded in 2017, which is about $10,000 lower than the national average. New York City has a flourishing economy. Um, New York City added 584,000 private sector jobs uh, from 2008 to 2017. Um, Manhattan brought in 35% of these private sector jobs, and these private sector jobs resulted in a 4.2% unemployment rate. Um, the poverty level in New York City has been declining over the last 20 years. Uh, in 1999, it was recorded at 21.9%, and in 2017, it was recorded at 19.6%. Uh, this resulted in a growing employment rate. Uh, in 2015, it was recorded at 4.1 or million, uh, which is seen here in this graph. Uh, most of the jobs held in New York City are white collar, which range from financial attorney and uh, real estate positions. So with 8.4 million people living in the city, there has to be a way for them all to get around. And New York has the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, which is MTA for short, which operates the New York subway in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Queens. Additionally, they operate the Staten Island Railway, Long Island Railroad, and the Metro North Railroad. In New York, there are 472 subway stations, which just so happens to be the largest public transportation system in the world. The subway ridership saw a decline from 2016 to 2017, following the previous four years where there was growth. When it comes to bus routes, there are 326, which also saw a decline in ridership from 2014 to 2017. And as you can see on the graph here, there was roughly a 36,000 riders annually uh, declined from 2016 to 2017. What the committee found shocking was that only 46% of households in New York City own a car compared to the national average, which is 91%. So looking into the history of New York City and the New York area, it was first settled by the Dutch in 1624, as stated in the uh, introduction. Uh, it was later purchased from the natives for 60 guilders, which is the uh, Dutch's golden penny. And this wasn't just in currency, it was mostly uh, tools and items and goods that the natives wanted. Uh, it was accidentally named by Henry Hudson uh, when he sailed down the river. He was looking at a map from the previous year, and he noticed that it was uh, titled Manhattan uh, on the east side, which quickly became Manhattan, the name stuck. Um, during the Revolutionary War, uh, New York City housed a wide range of people who supported the revolution and it acted as a hub for you know, the revolution itself. It was later taken by the British uh, before we won the war and got it back. Uh, the trade ports that New York has had since its beginning uh, has acted um, as a way for immigrants and ideas to be brought into uh, the city itself. And the Nationality Act of 1965 only furthered this as it allowed immigrants from Asia, Africa, the Caribbean, and Latin America to come and settle. 
So the city is divided into four major regions, which are Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn. The uh, New York City metro area is surrounded by the Hudson River, and Hudson River was very useful during, during for uh, its trade routes and travel routes. And in the picture, you can see the major highways of New York City, such as I-95, I-295, I-80, I-278. I the population of the New York City is about roughly 8.4 million. 47.5 of them are male, and 52.5% of them are female. Among this population, about 44% of them are white or Caucasian, 25.5% are African American or black, 12.7% Asian, 0.7% American Indian or Alaska Native, about 0.2% Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. About 80.9% of the population are 16 years and over. About 74.1% are 21 years and over, and only about 15% are 62 years and over. Average age for male is 34 years old, and average female age is 36.9 years old. And there, is, there are approximately 3.1 million households in the city. 59.5% of them are family households, and remaining are single person households. And so when talking about the community infrastructure for New York City, first we want to talk about the park system. Um, there is an estimate of over 1,700 parks in the city, most notable among them being Central Park. Uh, this park in particular includes uh, a lake, playgrounds, skating rinks, gardens, fountains, and even a zoo. And the average uh, park in the city was last renovated in 1997. And there, is a, there was a 2014 initiative to direct millions of dollars for the improvement of these underfunded parks. And next we want to talk about the library system. Uh, the library system in New York City was first formed in 1895 from the Astor Library and Lenox Library. Um, it was known then as the New York Public Library. And in the city there are now uh, 39 libraries, and these are located throughout uh, Manhattan, 35, in the Bronx, 39 in Manhattan, uh, and 13 in Staten Island. Um, second in size, only behind the Library of Congress, the, this system is. And regarding community infrastructure, uh, the city relies on its uh, water and waste systems. For the water system, it relies on aqueducts, reservoirs, watersheds, and tunnels. For the waste system, um, it is known as the New York City Department of Sanitation. It handles nearly uh, 12,000 tons of waste and recyclables a day. Additionally, it handles 3.8 million tons of waste a year. Um, of this, 14% is recycled, 7.6 or 76% is sent to landfills, and 10% is converted to energy at a waste to energy facility. And these statistics come from the city's citizens budget mission from 2014. So New York City being such a large city, you have a lot of environmental impacts that affect people's health. Um, the massive population and its booming industry uh, places New York City uh, 44 out of 56, um, well, it brings the whole state down to 44 out of 56 states and territories um, rated by the EPA. Uh, this pollution is mostly caused from cars and other like fuel burning heaters and um, production facilities, and it produces the PM 2.5 particle, which is small enough to enter into the respiratory system of humans and animals, and it can cause a wide range of health effects, ranging from a simple cough all the way to cancer, if not treated. Um, so there has been work in recent years to lo lower um, the sulfur content in fuels that is burned by cars and other heaters for buildings and whatnot and that has made a difference. Uh, as you can see here on the picture, this is a heat map of the relative pollution in the area. Uh, the two red districts in the middle are over the acceptable level of 12 micrograms per cubic meter of air. But everything else is in the clear. There's a few areas that are quickly approaching that, but efforts have been made to halt that effort. So the committee was asked to determine whether or not New York City is better off implementing a new bus system or not. What the committee decided was that the city would be better off not implementing a new one 
because of the recent decline in ridership over the past few years, the committee determined that tax dollars could be better spent on an affordable housing program or a proactive solution to pollution levels, whether that's in the streets or the waterways. And uh, thanks, Diego.